Hello and welcome to Upside Down. In today's quick tutorial, I want to show you the basics for animations inside 3ds Max. I'm also preparing a tutorial around rigging and as well adding controllers to our rigs so that we can easily manipulate and interact with it. I'll be making the animation tutorials from the perspective of an environment artist, as this is my area of expertise, but I'll also make few tutorials for characters as well, because at some point I was freelancing and I was working with characters. Let's start. The first thing that I want to show you is how to edit the timeline and also how to operate with it and how to add keyframes or remove them. So uh, I want you to notice that our timeline at the moment has 100 frames. This can be very easily edited from the button down here, time configuration where we can put what is the length of our timeline. So if we want, for example, 250 frames, I can make it like this, click OK, and we can see that now our timeline is much longer. Now let's create a box, and I will make two keyframes in the very beginning of our animation and also at the very end. And before adding the keyframes, I will make my timeline a little bit shorter, so I'll make it just 80 frames. And I'm going to add two keyframes in the very beginning and in the very end, and we are going to move the boxes on the x-axis. So there are two ways of adding keyframes. First is using Auto Key. Auto Key is automatically creating keyframe whenever we make some movement. So for example, if the box is already here and then I move my timeline, let's say on 15th frame and I move my box, you can see that it created automatically two keyframes. This is very easy and useful if you're creating a very quick animation, but when it comes to a little bit more complicated uh, movements and motions, I usually prefer adding the keyframes on my own. So let me show you how to do this. I'll stop out of key and, and I'll click Ctrl Z so I can remove the keyframes and go back to starting position. So this time I'm going to use set key. For adding keyframes on our own, every time that we want to add a keyframe, we need to click the button over here or click K on the keyboard. This is going to add a keyframe. So now I can go all the way to the end and move our box on the other side and click K one more time. If I come and click the play animation, you can see that our box is moving. I want you to notice that the animation has a little bit of a ramp up while it gets to the full velocity and also slow down at the very end. And this is because our speed is not linear on the box, but instead there is a curve. And I want to show you how to edit these curves. First, I will delete this animation so we can select the keyframes down below and click delete. And then I'm going to clone the box one more time. I'll select both of the boxes this time. Go to set keys, set a key. We are setting a beginning key. I'm moving my slider and then we are moving it on the other side and setting another key. So now both of them are moving the same way, but what we are going to do, I will edit the curve of the second box. The way to access the animation curves inside 3ds Max is from graph editors and then we have track view curve editor. This will open for us the window for the curve editor. I'll just move it here on the side as our animation is pretty short. So when we have uh, an object select, we can see that here there are few lines which correspond to the colors of our axis. And since our object is moving on the X axis, we can see that here there is a small square. This small square represents our keyframe and also at the end keyframe, we also have the same small square, which represents the end of our animation. And at the moment, we can see that this line is not straight, but, but instead it has this curve. And if we select the other object, we can see that it's exactly the same. But if I select the both keyframes, the start one and the end one, and we can use from the tools on the top, a tool which will make it straight. So I'll just expand our curve editor so that we can see all the tools on the top. And now as we have both of the keyframes selected and you can see that here on the top we have this automated tools which we can edit our curves. So I'm going to use the one which is set tangent to linear and you can see that now our line is straight instead of curved. I'll close the curve editor and now if I click play you will see the difference between both animations. Playing with the curves is something which is essential and it's very important when you're doing animations as you can emphasize on different movements or you can slow them down or you can make them smooth or more sharp. So from there you can control a lot how your animation is behaving. 
Thank you for joining me in today's quick tutorial. I hope that it was helpful and useful. Leave a comment down below if you want me to make a video on a certain topic. Like the video and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the new tutorials that are coming. See you next time.